Richard Spencer speaks at Florida University. Richard Spencer speech at Florida University and the battle for free speech. So Richard Spencer's, Spencer's speech has set off a firestorm of reactions from those who vehemently oppose his views. And in that firestorm lies the ugly specter of a different tyranny than the one they are rightly rejecting. My name is Paul Gordon. I'm with iState.tv, and this is your iTop feature. So this video is being made before the scheduled speech today, which is scheduled for October 19th, 2017, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is as the time that this video is actually being made. It's about an hour or so away. By the time you see the video posted, it'll probably be about a half hour or so uh, after the video is posted. Uh, but this video is not so much about the speech itself as it is about what's emerging from the rise of Richard Spencer and his white nationalist goons, the polite, well-dressed Nazis that are still, at the end of the day, just Nazis. Every bit as hateful and dark as the Nazis of Hitler Germany. So the state-run media is painting the event as a challenge to the notion of free speech and defining when speech goes too far and loses its First Amendment protections. University of Florida President W. Kent Fuchs, there's a, there's a last name for you, Fuchs, F-U-C-H-S. Yeah. Ah, oh, the jokes I could have made there, but I'm not in the mood for jokes today. Speaking to CNN said that the event is going to change the complexion of the campus. It's not going to feel like a research university for 50,000 students, and the whole purpose of that is to keep people safe. He's referring to all the armed guards that are there with their, <laughs> you know, they're, they're equipped. They're basically paramilitary uh, troops that have been and brought in, uh, thanks to Governor Scott's uh, state of emergency speech, and we, we covered that in a video uh I think it was last week. Was it last week or this week? I can't even remember. So Fuchs added that he was advising students to shun Spencer and to also speak against Spencer's message of hate and racism. So here are a couple of the reactions from the students on campus that CNN chose to highlight. So this reaction here, this is from Farah Moskowitz. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a, a lot of just unknown what's going to happen. Wesley, a 20-year-old, I think uh, I think they said it was a philosophy major, if that matters. It's very, he said, it's very sense and upsetting. A lot of people aren't going to be around campus because they're war worried. So the narrative is being pushed. The way CNN covered the, the story uh, in and, and also in the way that the Florida president talked about the speech... And in the two examples CNN chose to highlight as responses to students, this narrative in large part is being aided and abetted by anarchists. Anarchist, Antifa, anarchists who fundamentally reject the state, but whose tactics seem to be emboldened, well, emboldening at least, the very state that they purport to hate. It was, after all, by my uh, assessment, Antifa's cry of punch a Nazi that gave legitimacy and fuel to the narrative that existed before the current rise of Antifa, the notion of hate speech. The idea that speech is deemed offensive, speech that is deemed hateful, is not protected speech and should not be allowed. Antifa themselves, they're not really participating in the debate about whether it is is or is not protected speech because that question lies completely outside of their worldview altogether. In their worldview, the whole notion of public space is an absolute non-starter. There is no state to own public space. 
They are almost treating public space as a sort of marsh, which is uh, a land between two kingdoms that no kingdom claims. So as such, within their parameters, someone is free to say what they want, but they're not free from the consequences of their actions. And I, and I got to be honest with you, intellectually, I, I, I understand. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I absolutely understand the points that they make. No one wants to see the, see the rise of white nationalists in any form except for this small minority of actual white nationalists that exist in this country today. When you exist within the reality of the coercive enterprise, the state, the First Amendment as a protection of speech in a public space does indeed create a safe haven for groups like white nationalists to organize and gain legitimacy. So if you believe, as Antifa does, that white nationalism has a real chance of actually seizing power if it is not stopped early, then then you can understand why they would feel compelled to go into those marshes. Not marches, marshes. This, 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 this it, it, uh, I guess you could say, uh, not, not legitimately governed land by Antifa standards. Uh, you can understand how they would want to go into those marshes and confront the white nationalist with violence to destroy every attempt they make to organize. First of all, I don't exactly agree with Antifa that white national has a, nationalism has a real chance of seizing power now or in the near future. I'm not saying that I'm 100% right about that. I'm just not convinced. I'm, I, I do agree, however, with Antifa that white nationalists having the power to gather in public spaces and spew their hatred and vitriol does empower them, does help them grow their numbers, and this definitely is troubling to me but now now you have you have antifa and the threat of that violent repercussion to a white nationalist rally creating a false legitimacy of the state limiting free speech on the basis of hate speech after all if you raise the cost of security and 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 by the way, the the the, the president he, he brought this up as well, and, and I include that in the article that this video is based on, the article that I wrote on iState.tv. If you in, if you raise the cost of security, a cost raised not so much by Spencer as by the threat of violence by Antifa and other counter press, uh, protesters, and I want to make it clear, most counter protesters are not coming to 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 basically you know pledging and you know they're not coming with the uh, punch a Nazi slogan echoing in their heads it's just a few but but the few is more than enough to raise the cost of security what you do is you give the state an emotional appeal to the masses to convince them to agree to new laws maybe even a new amendment that will give the state the power to determine if your speech is hateful if your speech is offensive or not. Make no mistake, Antifa will find itself on the brute, brute, brute force end of these laws. This, uh, and if there's a new amendment of also this uh, amendment. And their hope of moving towards statelessness rather than being advanced by punching Nazis will be hindered. To put it more plainly, let me, let me, let me just make sure that I've got them in the background here. Hello, Antifa. Hello. To put it more plainly to Antifa, and I know some of them, and, and I like them. I, I, I won't say I like Antifa as, I mean, I'm, I like these individuals. And I know some of the people who support the punch a Nazi philosophy, and I like them. I, again, I like some of them, the ones that I personally know. This is the message that I want to send to you. Your tactic of punching Nazis will build a stronger state. Now, I, I, I do want to say this, that if we were in a climate where you had a hope that the dialogue 
could that that the that the dialogue that you would be forcing is is the the whole notion of public space because public space is what is creating this friction public space creates uh an outlet for individuals to gather and actually plan to do very diabolical things under the protection of free speech and 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 yes they can do it well within the parameters of free speech but on the other side of that you have what what are you supposed to do do you do you just let them speak uh, i mean you could show up and you could do your 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 counter protest do you shout them down isn't that uh what do you call that? A uh, uh, a bully's uh, veto or whatever it's called. Uh, what what exactly do you do? It's the public space that has created the problem in the first place. Without the public space, these guys have no big dramatic place to gather unless they own the land themselves. And they don't own this land. And and I don't think that they own the land where they can come and they can have this type of effect where they can come amongst amongst uh, people who. I think overwhelmingly, at least right now, uh, uh, are, are vehemently opposed to their ideas, and they gain legitimacy from that public space. They gain legitimacy being able to stand up and, and see, look, it's all right. We can talk out in the open. I understand the frustration that Antifa has, but I'm here to say that that dialogue, that isn't even possible. What will happen what I've outlined is the dialogue is going to become about the notion of free speech itself. Never mind that the fundamental problem is the public space. The fundamental problem will be couched in, have we gone too far with free speech? You know, do we need, do we need to roll back the First Amendment? I mean, you know, they were writing in a different time in a different place. Is this, is this really what they intended? And you're going to have people that, that will rally to support the idea of empowering the state to limit your speech based on it being defined as hate speech. And I can assure you that the tyranny that comes from that will be, well, I'm going to say it'll be every bit as bad as, as, as what the na white nationalists could offer. It, you, you may end up with a different group of dead people. But there's going to be dead people in, in the thousands, maybe even the millions, as a result of, uh, of, of that dark hole that you're opening up. And I understand. I empathize with you. The, the, the whole idea of white nationalism rising anywhere is, I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I, 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 I run iState.tv. And iState.tv is it's a it's a site that is designed for people, whether well, it's designed for people who may be a little curious about maybe uh, pursuing a life of building a state of one as opposed to a state of thousands, you know, a nation state. Uh, but it's but it's also really for for a place for for folks that have already decided I want to build a state of one. And I understand the rise of white nationalism fundamentally interferes with that possibility. But so does the rise of, I don't know, lefto fascism, whatever you want to call it. And no, I'm not calling Antifa lefto fascists. They're not. Not as far as I can see. Uh, I won't say that, that they're all alike. Some of them may actually fit into that lefto fascist kind of. Uh, but but not not the, not the not the ones that I've looked at. They they are they're actual anarchists. They are not for using the state to force people to live a certain way. So they won't have the voice at that table though. When it when it comes to okay now what do we do? I mean the the lefto fascists will treat Antifa like like the West is treating the Kurds in Iraq right now. Oh you were useful for a while, but. But when it comes time, when it comes time to actually make decisions of power, Antifa, you're not going to be sitting in that room. You're not there. No one wants a stateless world like you do. Well, I mean, the people that you're allied with, they don't want that stateless world. So you're going to be enabling uh, monsters every bit as dark as the monsters inside Richard Spencer's head. Whatever happens today, Richard Spencer will come out still being portrayed as the villain that he is, 
a man whose ideas are anathema to anyone who values even the remotest of liberty. Or should I say the remotest notions of liberty. But thanks to the threats of violence by Antifa and other counter-protest groups, those who wish to roll back what little liberties are left in America will be given vast storehouses of ammunition with the liberty with with which to fire at those of us who still cling bitterly, even hopefully, to liberty. And after the speech and whatever event emerges from it is over. We will update uh, the article that this video is based on, which you can find in the upper right upper right corner of the video, as well as description in the comments below. So this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this has been your iTop feature. If you like this video and this channel, then please help us out by subscribing to us and, and click on the bell next to the big red, big red subscription button so you know when we make our next video. And do share this video with your friends and comment. Your comment might just end up in our weekly feature, You Comment.